Hey guys, welcome back to the next uh, video in the build series of the Aviation Design Diamond Aircraft. Really enjoying this process so far. Hopefully you guys are enjoying watching the process. If you didn't see the last video, make sure you check it out guys. We're giving away a set of Sky Candy landing lights. Once that video gets a thousand thumbs up, we will pick a random winner from all the people that commented in that last video. Um, I'll throw a link up right here. Uh, there's also gonna be a link in the description below. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out and comment quickly because I'm not gonna wait much longer after we get a thousand thumbs up. So guys, if it's your first time finding the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Again, give th this video a thumbs up and uh, let's dive back into uh, building this beautiful, bright, fast, futuristic looking aircraft. All right guys, we're gonna get a little bit serious here for just two minutes. And the reason I need to get a little bit serious is there's been a couple comments. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that some people were a little bit, we'll just say offended by the fact that I called this plane a target drone. So when I do my videos, guys, there is hours of footage that's taken, compiled to make a 20 to 30 minute video. So it's not something that I'm just putting together quickly and throwing out there in the uh, the internet interweb land and uh, hoping that it just works. Uh, there's a lot of thought put into my videos. And furthermore, when I put a video out, I'm not just making up the title based on what I think is gonna work best. I actually use software, a program, not software, I use a program on the internet called TubeBuddy to optimize my videos. I also go through a keyword search process to come up with the best title for my videos. And actually, if you wanna use my TubeBuddy referral link, it's listed down below. So, why do I do that to my videos, guys? I care about the title because I care about views because my YouTube channel is monetized and when you guys watch the ads or when the ads pop up, I make money and that's how I pay for part of my hobby. It's not tons of money, but it, it's helpful and it's something. So that's why I care about the title of my videos. That's why I care about the number of views. Now, the word target drone, aviation design actually makes the diamond airplane and they make the version of it, and it's actually called a target. It's basically the exact same plane. It's all carbon fiber, carries way more fuel, and uh, I'll throw a, a picture, a screenshot up of what it looks like, and there'll be a link down below to that, uh, the UAV side of, of what they do. And why did I call it that? Because it was uh, optimized better on YouTube. So I don't like to get serious guys in my videos. I like to keep it fun. I don't like to think about the politics in this hobby. I try and stay away from the politics in this hobby. I try and stay away from the nitpicking in every part of my life because I like to keep things fun. That's why my channel is called The Lighter Side of RC Guys. So if you have a problem with the title, I might continue it, I might not. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. It's not gonna change the title of my video. So that's the end of the series part, guys. Let's get back to it. All right, guys, now I think I'm gonna be working my way pretty much through the manual now that we've got all the servos mounted, but uh, of course we, we may deviate from the manual slightly as well. Um, anyways, I'm gonna start running wires in the, uh, the rudders and all that stuff, um, just so we can get that stuff sorted out. For this build, I'll be using Powerbox, uh, the maxi wire. Now the maxi wire is a little bit thicker than the uh, the standard wire. Uh, both work work great, but with the new maxi wire, that's all I've been using. And then all the power box connectors um, that go with it. So, all right. So first order of business here. Oh yeah, I did also mount my pitot tube as well. So that's uh, right there. Now the cool thing about the uh, the JR airspeed sensor is it uses just a standard. Um, tube there's not like the double tube setup so this is this is the tube it comes with but you can use just a standard whatever tube here's the uh, the rubber uh, airline or whatever and this plugs right into the sensor we're probably gonna mount the sensor right inside the uh, the rudder here 
and then there'll just be a, it's just a servo line, a servo lead that comes off the sensor. So anyways, I thought that was cool. I uh, figured I have it, so I would put it in this plane. And um, yeah, that's gonna be fun. Anyway, so first order of business here is running the lines from um, the elevators down to the connection point for the rudder. So the, the path for this stuff is basically um, down here into the, the rudder servo area through the former and out. One thing that I like about the aviation kit is they include all the schematics of uh, the former work and everything so you can see exactly how everything needs to be run, which is awesome. Totally appreciate that. All right, so it was actually pretty easy to get this wired up. Um, all I did was run a, my power box wire, my servo wire, right through to the other side because we've got an opening on both sides, right? And then I took my piece of wire. This is what I commonly use in all my uh, my plane builds to uh, to run wires. This is just like flexible. I think it's fencing wire. Anyways, I could go with the servo removed. I could go through the servo hatch up there, hooked onto the wire and then just pulled it down this way. So as I mentioned, the path for the wires is to come down here, go through the opening, and then come down to the end. So we've got our three servo leads for rudder and elevators, and then we've got our, our hose for the, uh, the airspeed sensor. So I think what I'm gonna use here is one of these 12 pin connectors um, that makes the most sense because we've got 12 pins, right? Um, and then what I'll do is, yeah, I'll just leave this floating around. So that actual connection point gets put about here. So I'll probably put a rubber grommet in the fuselage and then have this piece sitting something like that. And then the excess will sit inside the, uh, the rudder itself. So that'll be a nice connection point. We've got a nice bit of slack there as well, too, to be able to deal with that stuff. And um, yeah, that should work uh, work perfect. All right, guys, so since uh, we're kind of working on the rudder here, I might as well finish up the rest of the rudder area. So I've gone and marked the center of that opening on the, uh, the rudder, the vertical stab surface, this area here. So that dot is right in the center of this opening. So what I'll do now is I'm going to drill a hole. Um, for most my, of my holes, I, I definitely use drill bits and stuff, but I like using this reamer um, as well. So especially when you don't really know what's on the other side of, of things. I mean, in this area, we can look up and see what's up there and stuff, and there's wood up there and everything, but uh, I might use this, might use a drill bit, but anyways, we need an area there to pass our wires through, so that's what I'm gonna open up next. All right, guys, so that part is done. Um, next thing we need to do is drill a hole here for securing the rudder tube into the, the fuselage. So in the manual, it's covered here, so you can see that uh, the, um, the, the hole actually would be perpendicular to the rudder tube, so it comes in at a bit of an angle. And then we, uh, it says just to um, thread it into the tube, a Parker screw. So anyways, that's what we're gonna end up doing here. And it talks about doing it 15 millimeters in front of the tube. So we'll measure that out. We are first going to drill a hole at a diagonal through the, uh, the fuselage into the tube. Then we'll create a little bit of a recessed area. Um, we're gonna tap the, uh, the tube and the whatever's wood structures in there with a 440 um, tap. And uh, then we'll use a, a 440 screw to, sec to secure this all together.
Okay, so now we are drilled all the way through the tube. I'm just going to create a black line here on the fuselage joint. So we know where everything lines up in the future. And this is the screw we're actually going to thread into the, the tube. So what we want to do is we want to create a recessed area that uh, is big enough to hold the, the screw head in because we can't have it protruding from the fuselage. So we'll take a little bit bigger drill bit that matches the head size. So we've tapped that. Now we'll just test fit it with the screw and see how it works. There's a close up shot of what it looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is take the screw out, uh, put a drop of CA on there just to uh, stiffen up the wood that that screws into. But now our, uh, our vertical tube is secure. Next thing we're going to work on is putting the piece of dowel inside here for the actual rudder securing um, and finish up the wiring. All right, guys, I don't know if the camera is going to pick that up, but uh, maybe you'll see down in there. Yeah, there we go. You can see the, uh, the 440 bolt going in through there. Good job, camera. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is I, I also made this hole a little bit bigger. So we're gonna have some light wires coming through there as well too for the sky candy lights is we need to leave enough space for all the wires. So we have um, three surface control wires. We've got one for the, uh, the airspeed sensor. Um, then we're gonna have some for the, um, the lighting system as well too. So instead of using like a rubber grommet in here, and the reason I don't wanna do the, the rubber grommet is we've got uh, fiberglass, glue, layers of plywood in there as well too. You can see the depth. So the grommet's really not the ideal solution. So what I'll do in this case is I'll use some of the uh, the snakeskin material. I've got this in silver as well too, um, but I'll use this to encase the, uh, the wires. So basically we'll have all the servo wires in one of these looms and then we'll have all the lighting wires in one of those looms as well too. Okay guys, so next thing I wanna work on is getting the rudder uh, tube and everything, the mounting system done up. Now, one thing to think about when you're doing this is you want to, uh, obviously the, the manufacturer has gotten rid of some of the, the ribs. Um, there's still a little bit of the, the joint material left. Uh, so we might be uh, dealing with this, but primarily you wanna make sure that um, the surface is nice and smooth too, right? So uh, this is actually pretty good, but we're probably gonna do a little bit of work to just get rid of the ridge. And you want these pieces to fit as tight as possible is really what it comes down to. So I know on the wings of this plane, um, the actual wing has a bit of a, a raised joint there. So we'll definitely have to deal with that. But I think this is pretty good, but we'll probably just take a little bit of a, of my uh, my little mini planes and just sand these things down just to give them a final, uh, final treatment. And then we'll uh, see how this thing installs. All right, guys, so we don't need anything super aggressive when you're dealing with these uh, um, joint lines. So I just use a little mini plane. Um, I can't remember where I picked this up. I think it was at the hobby store, but this works absolutely great for this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, if there's a high spot there, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna find it and let you know. So I just run that across. Again, these aren't bad at all. The, the wings need some attention. Yeah, the rest of that is fine. So anyways, just uh, that's the tool I use and that's what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get that airspeed sensor um, put in here, just so it's uh, we've got all the servo leads and stuff dealt with. And then we're gonna put this on the plane and figure out our fastening system. 
All right, so this is the uh, JR Airspeed Sensor TLS-1-Speed Airspeed. So it's nice, simple design. So basically the, uh, the tube, silicone tube there, plugs onto the end of it. And then this just plugs into the telemetry port. And uh, that's it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to use some double-sided tape, stick this up in the, uh, in the, um, the rudder there like that with the tube there and then we'll have this um, connecting to that 12 pin connector. All right guys, so the rudder's all mounted. Um, we'll check our gap here. And we are nice and tight. It's just a sliver of a gap on the back there, but that is totally fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to drill into this hole. So when I do that, I'm gonna be drilling through the aluminum tube. The al aluminum tube comes right up to here, so right on the edge of the servo. And when we drill that aluminum tube, then our um, mark inside the tube is gonna be marked, okay? And then what we'll do is after that, we're going to be putting a, a wooden dowel in there. So I'll show you guys that in a second. All right, so, and this this stuff here, guys, this comes from the internet. Uh, there's lots of guys that have done this before and talked about it on the forums and things like that. So nothing, nothing different or special here. Um, it's a great idea. So what we do now is we take a piece of dowel. Um, doesn't have to be super long, you know, maybe four inches, we'll call it. And then what we do is we half cut the dowel on the back side like that and then we're going to insert the dowel with a blind nut on this side uh, with some polyurethane glue that gorilla glue and then we put the rudder on we cinch the rudder down and then that keeps everything nice and tight and aligned so now when we take this screw out it's coming out of a blind nut on the back side and then the rudder will come off. So uh, we'll go through the steps here and I'll show you guys how that all works out. All right guys, so we use the uh, the Gorilla Glue in there. And as I talked about before, the way this Gorilla Glue works is it reacts with moisture. So what I did was I soaked the dowel in uh, water and uh, put a bunch of drops of Gorilla Glue in the tube. Uh, used my poker to uh, put it down there and spread it all around the tube. And then I just slid the uh, the dowel in, flush with the edge of the tube. And we'll let that cure. And then basically what we'll do afterwards is drill the hole, put the blind nut in. I was thinking about doing that all first, but I think it'd be better to uh, have the rudder installed, then drill the hole just so everything's lined up properly and then we can put the blind nut in. And then we're not worrying about having to deal with this uh, this thing slipping down and stuff like that, so. All right, guys, I actually just squished that glue down, but you can see uh, how the glue reacts. It basically foams up and, and expands, so it's pretty cool stuff. Um, but it's not fully cured yet, so we're still waiting on this to cure. And we got our wiring loom all finished. So um, it's pretty straightforward. This is the end I wanted on the rudder portion. The obviously the other end is going on the fuselage. We've got, uh, I just marked these out. So airspeed, rudder, right elevator, left elevator. And then when we do our connecting piece that uh, gets marked the same way. And then I, what I do is I mark the ends of the wires that go towards the front part of the fuselage. So nothing gets mixed up. But uh, that's basically the, uh, the rudder portion. So we are putting lights in here. So I'm not entirely sure what I want to do yet for running the wires. I'm probably going to wait to run the wires just because there's no way to keep them up in this area easily. And it's really not that big of a deal to, to run them. And then if we do actually cut these tips off, it's going to be easier to route those wires anyways. So I'll leave the wires for now. Um, so the rudder is pretty close to being done we just need to wait for this to cure and then we will drill that and put the uh the blind nut in there all right guys so rudder is back on now we want to drill for So we've drilled a hole through the rudder that the three, three millimeter screw almost is the right size. Now what we're going to do is take the rudder off. 
and we're going to drill a little bit bigger hole for the blind nut to go in the back side. Okay, so now we take a drill bit that is sized for the blind nut, which is that one. And all we need to do is get that sort of started. Okay, so blind nut is basically seated all the way down in there. And now, we're gonna put the rudder back on and make sure everything fits. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Now the rudder skin itself, the fiberglass is still um, only as big as the screw. So that's going to make it a little bit difficult. So I want to size that up just a little bit where the screw is actually um, able to slide in and out. Otherwise, what's going to happen is we're going to thread this in. And if the threads don't line up on the blind nut, then the, um, the blind nut will just get pushed out. So we'll just go a little bit bigger on that. Perfect. So threads right in, no problem. So now if we go too tight on this, what's gonna happen is we run the risk of crushing the skin of, well, I can actually already see it indenting a little bit there. All right guys, came up with a much better solution here. You can see how the screws countersunk. All I did was take my uh, Align helicopter all and then just angle it and basically pull some of the finish away. Some of the outside layer. And the reason I did that, the reason I did that is because underneath the fiberglass there's about a quarter inch of wood um, before you get to the wing tube. So now, when we tighten this thing down, so we're actually tightening against the plywood, and the bolt is sitting recessed in the exterior skin. Nice, and it's almost flush. So that worked out way better. Yeah, that's awesome. All right guys, there's a shot of the finished product. That worked out very, very well. I'm very happy with the way that that was all finished. All right, so I don't think I showed you before the, the screen over top of the vents. We've got a little bit of cleanup to do on that one, but uh, that's what it looks like after it was hot glued. Okay, so next thing we're gonna figure out is where to route the um, wires. So, We've got the hole, I think you guys will be able to see it, the hole for the wires on the rudder right there at the tip of my finger. So I think we're gonna come down. We're gonna come through this back former hole and then we're gonna stay up at the top and then we'll come through, I guess if you wanna call it the firewall, uh, we'll come through the firewall kinda near the top as well. I've just got the fuselage turned on the side for ease of access. Obviously the goal with this is try to keep it uh, away from the engine as much as possible. I think we're, if we're up high like that, that'll be no problem at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the wires um, run. I'm gonna put snake skin on them, so that, that covering material. And then I'm also going to put a, um, a mount or a, a fastening point or whatever in the fuselage, so the wires are for sure gonna stay up high like that. So anyways, guys, that's uh, what I'm gonna do. All right, it does amaze me sometimes the amount of wire that goes into this uh, these turbine aircraft, and just aircraft in general. Uh, this is the 
just the four wires that are going to the rudder section. And that's not even including any lights yet. So anyways, what I did guys was I route, routed one wire um, across the top here on the inside of the fuselage. I routed one wire across the fuselage top. There's a hole in the firewall, which is right behind here. Then it comes out the hole, which is right up there behind the, uh, the intake and then down to this section. And then we've got about a, another foot of, of excess wire. So the reason I left so much excess is because I don't know if I'm gonna put my receiver here. I don't know if I'm gonna put it on top uh, of the plate, but we got lots of excess servo wire. And now I'm going to take these four leads and put the pins on and put them in the male side of the connector for the rudder. Okay guys, the uh, the connectors all wired up and uh, we've got our wire all the way to the end there. Also cut a piece of the snakeskin material and uh, so we're going to put that the wire through there, um, put a zip tie around that and this is going to be the piece that's sticking out of the fuselage. And then what I did was run that about, I don't know, 10 inches or so to the end so no matter how we set this plane up this will be enough uh, extension on there to either mount the receiver up high mount it down low it's all going to work fine so the beauty of making your own servo connectors so the only thing we have to do now is we have to mark out what these leads are so I'm just going to wrap a piece of tape around there and just write uh, the appropriate symbols and stuff that I have on the connector. Mm -hmm.